All right, welcome everybody to another Build Fly Go video. So you have uh, seen a few of our videos, hopefully, um, and maybe noticed some hints about a big trip that's coming up. Um, but first off, I wanted you to meet uh, Mary, Miss Build Fly Go. Hi. <laughs> Who's, who you've seen in a couple of videos already. Um, Mary just passed her private pilot check ride uh, last week. Last week, Thursday. Yes, so she is officially a pilot and will be helping with this trip. Um, you notice in the background on my screen, there is a Google Maps zoom out of the Americas. Um, we are flying uh, 689 Aramia Victor, which you've seen in the videos, all the way from Madison up here, all the way down here to Brazil, and then back. <laughs> Not leaving it there. Um, in uh, Probably in March of this year, so in about a month. Um, we're going to be recording a lot of videos, doing uh, time lapses of the entire flight, um, hopefully posting them. Um, at the end of the day, we'll see how tired we are. And uh, yeah, it should be a lot of fun. So let's take a peek at this route. So it's a pretty long trip, and here it is in Garmin Pilot. But for long range planning uh, like this, it's it's really sort of easier to do it in a browser. So let's shift to Sky Vector. Starting in the US, uh, sort of in the northern Midwest up here uh, near the, the Great Lakes um, and heading all the way through into Florida, across the Bahamas, the Caribbean, the Eastern Caribbean, um, south into Trinidad and Tobago, avoiding Venezuelan airspace, staying off the coast a little bit, into Guyana, and then into Boa Vista in Brazil, and then crossing Brazil all the way down to Rio de Janeiro. Um, it's, a, it's a long trip. It's, uh, I think we're estimating about, oh, 40 hours, uh, 40 to 50 hours. It'll depend on how long, you know, how much time we spend on, uh, Things like, you know, takeoffs and landings and pattern work and diversions and, and things like that. Um, about 5,300 miles, roughly, uh, each way. <laughs> so that's 40, 40 to 50 hours um, each direction and 5,300 miles, roughly, each way. So let's take a peek. Let's do this day by day. Um, so we're taking off in Madison. Let me zoom out one here. Taking off in Madison. Uh, Going to be all fueled up and ready to go. Um, and then heading south towards Florida, uh, we're figuring on doing um, two two stops just to stretch our legs. Um, I believe this uh, first one is about three hours um, into this little airport. Uh, honestly, I don't remember what this airport is. Lafayette Municipal. Um, top up fuel, stretch our legs, and then down to Cook County which is about, uh, looks like another, just under three hours. Um, those numbers don't seem quite right. Uh, this is probably with wind. And then into um, Fort Lauderdale Executive, where we're going to be spending the night. Um, you can see the Fort Lauderdale airspace here is quite busy. And we're spending the night here because this is going to be like eight, nine hours of um, uh, yeah, eight, nine hours of uh, flying, seven to nine hours of flying, depending on what wind is doing. Um, and we want to be fresh for crossing and going over the water and dealing with immigration and all that kind of stuff. So um, Fort Lauderdale Executive has Banyan Air. It's an FBO that uh, has sort of made its name um, focusing on uh, helping new people uh, do Bahamas trips and things like that. So we figured it was a, a good stop. Um, they don't charge anything for us to uh, tie down there, which is nice. And they get, you know, and there's a discount on fuel if uh, you get there, you sign up online for their uh, marketing stuff. So they give us a buck off per gallon, which is quite nice. So filling up here um, and then uh, going to a hotel, getting some dinner, and then coming back early in the morning, probably around 8 a.m., planning on being at the airport. Um, filing all of our stuff, uh, we need to file EAPIS to cross the U.S. border. Um, file a flight plan and uh, and then go and uh, it, it's interesting in, in our flight plan you, you might have seen this in my Canada videos in the flight plan you have to say at what time you're going to be crossing the um, the ADIS which is this right here the contiguous US ADIS um, 
but uh, yeah, so uh, we'll file the plan and say, you know, east of, uh, I believe this is actual Fort Lauderdale Airport, east of Fort Lauderdale Airport, um, what is that, 20 miles, 10 miles, something like that, um, at X, X time. Uh, okay, so that's night one. So on day two, we're going to cross uh, direct to the South Bimini, Bimini VOR um, and keep going. We're not stopping there. Um, and then direct to the new NASA VOR, also not stopping there. Uh, you're noticing that we're following airways because we want um, well-defined uh, flight plans, fl well-defined flight areas, so that if anything goes wrong, we can say we are on the Alpha 555 over blah, blah, blah. Um, and then we get to Stella Maris. Stella Maris, Maris, Maris? Stella Maris is where we're doing our entry um, into the Bahamas. And uh, it's a nice little airport. Oh, yes. They have plenty of, um, you know, they have customs and border protection and all that kind of stuff. And they're easy, you know, easy to deal with. Uh, I'll pop up a picture for what this looks like. All right, so um, where's Stella Maris? Uh, this is uh, a few hours. I believe this is about three hours away um, overall from uh, from uh, Miami. And um, the plan is to just stretch our legs, maybe get some lunch depending on what time it is, and then keep going. Um, we're going to go all the way to the Dominican Republic. So back on an airway over here, um, over to uh, Grand Turks, um, just the Grand Turks VOR, just gonna keep going. We had considered stopping at Providenciales, but Providenciales apparently has gotten really bad with uh, general aviation airplanes. The fuel is really expensive. They charge you fees for everything. So they're getting a really bad vibe and they're apparently losing a bunch of uh, general aviation business because of it. Um, which is a shame. Uh, they're, you know, nicely along the way. It would have been a good spot for us to stop, but uh, I guess not. We keep going. So Grand Turks, and then south on the airways to Puerto Puerto Plata in Dominican Republic, where we're going to do our um, customs immigration for Dominican Republic, get some fuel um, as before, and uh, but we're not spending the night there. Uh, we figured we could go a little bit longer, and we're going to keep going to Punta Cana. Punta Cana is another little resort uh, town in, uh, or resortish town in uh, the Dominican Republic. Lots of hotels, lots of you know easy, um, you know low stress kind of kind of things. Um, Punta Cana has an FBO which uh, does charge fees, but um, from the research that we've done, the FBO is actually really really good, and they do everything for you and they handhold you through everything. So I'm willing to definitely pay for a service like that. Um, and especially because it's gonna be a long day. I believe that's a six hour day, seven hour day as well. Um, we're gonna be pretty tired and uh, it would be nice to just, you know, hand the plane to the FBO kind of situation, go to the hotel and uh, just sit on the beach and have a, a cold beverage and relax for, for the rest of the rest of the day. Um, this is a, one of the possible two night stops. We haven't uh, decided how that's going to go uh, because all of this is, um, you know, there's a lot of flexibility on, on this other than a couple of entries that I'm going to mention later on. Uh, there's a lot of flexibility and uh, we can spend two nights here if we want to, if we find that after two days of, uh, you know, eight, eight hours possibly the first day, seven hours the second day, um, if we decide that we'd like to spend a day here and just chill out we can do that there. It's also going to be very weather dependent, right? I mean, we're assuming the weather's going to be good for the entire trip, we hope. Um, but it could turn out to not be ideal and we have to be stuck somewhere for a couple of days. No stress, happy to do it. You know what, <laughs> you know, how bad could it really be, right? It's like, it's going to be beachy and sandy and uh, maybe not sunny because we're stuck there, but warm. And uh, I'm happy to stay in the Caribbean for a few days. <laughs> There's definitely no stress. So get up in the morning for day number three, and then we're gonna cross into Puerto Rico. Um, we are not stopping in Puerto Rico, partially because I didn't want to do another EAPIS, and um, we could make this work uh, without stopping there. Um, 
it's just a little bit of a hassle dealing with U.S. Uh, immigration, you know, if we don't have to. So, direct to a VOR. I don't remember which VOR this is. Let's have a look. This is a Mayaguez, Mayaguez VOR. Um, and then an airway. And then we're out of Puerto Rico, out of U.S. airspace, towards the St. Croix VOR. Uh, not stopping there again. Um, zoom out one. And uh, then to the Antigua, St. John VC Bird Antigua Airport, where we are stopping and getting out and stretching our legs, getting some food probably, um, and uh, getting fuel, of course, and relaxing for, you know, half hour, maybe an hour before we continue south. Um, this is also a good possibility for weather doesn't look great. This is a great place to stop. Um, of course, we can stop anywhere, right? Like if weather doesn't look great, we can stop at any of these airports. We're doing this safe. Nobody's in a hurry to get anywhere. We've got plenty of time to do this. <laughs> so, um, but that would be a nice place to stop. Uh, so we can stop there and um, get some fuel and whatnots and then continue south. Uh, still on day number three, um, following the airways south. I believe this is Martinique. The Martinique VOR in Martinique. Keep going. The Hawanora, Hawanora VOR. And keep going. And then to Granada. And Granada is uh, an overnight for us. It's a beautiful, beautiful little airport. Um, great little island. Uh, we've heard some great things about people flying into there. Um, that it's a nice location and, you know, just great place to be. Um, and again, it's an overnight stop for us. We definitely have to do one overnight there, uh, but we can do more. Uh, we're happy to, to stay there um, as long as it takes for weather to, to clear up. And the reason for that is we want absolute perfect weather doing this next segment. I'm zooming out here for you to see what this looks like. So we, this, this is day number four, and we're going into Guyana, and then into Brazil. So there's two big entries here. Um, and additionally, this is Venezuela. Venezuelan airspace is closed to US registered aircraft. Uh, the FAA has issued a NOTAM and it's closed the airspace. We're not allowed in there by US rules. Um, I haven't even looked into uh, Venezuelan, air, uh, Venezuelan rules. <laughs> it's possible that they won't let us in there as well. So we sort of got a zig you know, we go down past Trinidad and Tobago and then zig past this way. We would have stayed at Trinidad and Tobago for that overnight, but it turns out that they're also sort of complicated um, from what we keep hearing from people. So we're just going to avoid them. You know, we want to avoid complication whenever we can, right? So not stopping there, we're spending the night up in Granada and then getting up as uh, early as we can, filing our flight plan and flying into Guyana. You'll notice that we're sort of offshore here a good bit um, this is probably one of like one of the two most unpleasant parts of the trip for me, stress-wise, when being offshore, because this is, you know, this is ocean, right? Like we're out in the ocean over here. Up, up in the Caribbean, there's islands everywhere. Over here, there's nothing. So if we get pushed this way, um, we have, you know, someone has to come get us. There's no, you know, uh, paddling to shore or anything like that. So into Guyana. Um, Guyana was one of the locations that we had to get a formal uh, landing request with a landing permission with a date on it and you know they had to approve it and it took a very long time. They were very gracious, very nice, very easy to deal with. It just took a while. Um, so we're landing at the small airport in Guyana, um, not the big one um, sort of away from town. This is sort of downtownish and uh, getting fuel there. Um, we have an informal handler that we um, have heard uh, is very good and he's gonna show up and help us through all of that, but this should just take an hour, right? We're gonna stamp, 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 file flight plan for the next one, get fuel, um, eat a granola bar and go, right? Like we don't wanna spend time here because if the weather is good, we want to get out. We wanna go to Boa Vista. And the reason for that is this is thick jungle right here, like this segment. Um, there are a bunch of little airports, you can see the little circles here, but they're sort of 
they're they're not defined in similar ways to we're used to in the U.S. So there's not much information on them. You know, you don't know the runway conditions. You don't know if the airport is even open anymore. It's on this chart, but you don't know, right? Because it's, you know, there's so many close to each other, right? I've, most of these are dirt strips. Um, you know, <laughs> what 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 do what do they actually look? Like? So these are good emergency airports for us, but they're not by any means um, airports that we would use unless it was an emergency, like we had to get on the ground right away. Um, so. The uh, plan is weather is good. We're getting up. We're I'm sorry. We're getting up in Granada, and we're gonna go to Guyana, get our fuel, get our stuff done in Guyana, eat our granola bar, and keep going, and into Boa Vista in Brazil. Um, Brazil was the other uh, country that had um, sort of a complex uh, re set of requirements to allow us in. We had to prove that we had insurance. We had to you know provide all sorts of documentation. Um, on the aircraft, we had to tell them the you know the date in which we were going to enter, um, and they gave us an approval for that date. Um, all you know things like that, and I understand that when we get there, we have to go to like three or four different offices and get things stamped and get things approved. And um, it, it's my understanding that that can take uh, it can take all day, <laughs> depending on. Um, how things are going. Um, so the plan is that this is just like a, a four hour day tops. Um, so we get into Boa Vista around 1 p.m. is the goal. And then we're done for the day. You know, from 1 p.m. to the next day is just sorting things out, relaxing, checking the weather, making sure everything looks good and uh, just not stressing about anything. So let's see now. Um, I'll pull up some additional charts to show you guys as well. So um, then uh, the next day, I believe this is day number five at this point, um, we're going to head south. And you'll notice that there are no little airports around here. This is thick Amazon jungle. It's going to be trees for as far as the eye can see. <laughs> so this is probably the bit that is um, most worrying to us. Uh, we're flying over the airway, of course, and you'll notice that there is a road here. Um, so I want to have that road in sight and within gliding distance at all times. So that's the plan for this one. Um, there's a fix into here, a fix over here, and then we're stopping. Um, I believe this is about two hours. Let me pull it up. Uh, Boa Vista to Cypox is two hours, and Cypox to MNS is 15 minutes, and then MNS to Floridis is 1.2 minutes. So it's about two hours. And here we're staying at, you'll notice that there is a large airport, the Gomez International, Eduardo Gomez International. Um, but we're actually staying in the Manaus Floridis, which is an untowered airport. Um, just south of uh, south of here and uh there's a flying club there and we've talked to the flying club and you know they're like oh this is cool yeah we you know if you guys have to stay we have a hangar for you and you know there's fuel and all this kind of stuff that's sort of interesting about a lot of these stops is um because general aviation isn't that common in a lot of these countries uh, the availability of avgas is um, not always guaranteed so i've been told and it, it is the plan that um expect at some point we're going somewhere and there's no fuel so call the airports ahead of call before you take off and ask is there fuel we're going to be there in x number of hours is there going to be someone there that can fuel us up because a lot of times it's a fuel truck it's not like a pump like in the u.s um, and you have to pay cash and um, it's more complicated than we're used to um, in, in the united states so um so here at Floridis, we're going to stop for the, you know, for maybe an hour, get fuel, stretch out, maybe get something to eat nearby, um, hang out at the flying club. Um, we're going to call, uh, you know, the day before and let them know we're going to be there. We're, we're going to be leaving Boa Vista and we're going to be there. You know, like we're happy to talk to someone about our trip. If, you know, if you guys want to chat, you know, all that kind of stuff. Unfortunately, no beer for us, but uh, <laughs> we'll, we'll have some uh, some matchy or iced tea. <laughs> um, all right, then we keep going. Um, similar situation, not a lot of airports here, right? Like a lot of, like you can see the little ones, but not, not much. 
Um, so we're going over the airway direct to um, this Jacaria Kanga um, VOR, which is uh, over an airport. Uh, we're not stopping at the airport unless we feel like we need to, um, but we're going to continue to Alta Floresta, which is down here. Lots of little airports around here. Um, but uh, Alta Floresta was on the way, and uh, it looked like a good stop. It's a larger airport. It is untowered. We're, we're um, sticking to untowered airports uh, when safe um, because Brazil charges landing fees at towered airports um, and some other airports as well. But mostly, if it's towered airports, you're almost guaranteed to be charged a landing fee. If it's untowered, um, usually there's not a landing fee and there's no hassle. We don't mind paying the fees. Um, the problem is uh, the Brazilian registered aircraft get billed for the fees, but international registered aircraft, like an American aircraft, um, has to pay the fee before taking off. And because there's not very many, um, the person who collects the fee doesn't necessarily work every day, right? Like he might not work, he might only work two days a month because he just has to process the, you know, the billing for, for, for his airspace. Um, so if we land at an airport that collects fees and it's not a day that that guy works or that gal works, um, it's a bit of a hassle, right? Like I understand that they might be able to call the person and maybe they're available and maybe they can come in and you know, there's a lot of maybes. So we're avoiding that. We want to, you know, not get stuck somewhere for days because the guy's on vacation. <laughs> um, and, uh, and, and that's that. So, um, Alta Floresta is an overnight for us. Um, looks like a nice little place to overnight and, uh, yeah, fuel overnight, relax and uh, get ready for the next leg. So here we go. Uh, I think we're down day number six at this point. We're going to this little airport, this, uh, San, San Miguel do Araguaia, SWUA, um, 4,500 feet runway, nice long runway. I understand it's a nice little airport. We'll pop up a picture here for you. Um, looks fairly nice. And uh, get some fuel, stretch out, maybe get a snack. Uh, they're going to be eating a lot. Of, we're going to be eating a lot of granola bars on this trip, I think, because um, <laughs> we're not going to have definitely on the way south. We're not planning for a lot of like we want to get to Brazil, right? Like we want to figure out how or to Rio rather. We want to figure out how all this all works. We want to understand, you know, what's going on. Once we get to Rio and we start returning, we're going to take our time, right? Like if we get somewhere and it's like, oh, it's so hot out. I want to have a beer. Uh, yeah, okay, we'll, we'll end the day here and let's go have a beer. <laughs> so, stop for fuel in San Miguel de Araguaia, I believe that's what was. And then um, south into the Brasilia airport. So Brasilia is the capital of Brazil. Um, it's a, it's sort of an engineered, architected city. So you, you can see it looks like an airplane, isn't that, is that funny? Um, but we're not going to go into the main airport at uh, at uh, Brasilia because, of course, it's, it would be very expensive for fees and it's really not necessary. Instead, we're going to Lusiania, which is a town south of uh, Brasilia, that has a flying club um, and a flying school. And we called them as well, and they were very happy to um, host us and uh, provide a hangar and fuel and all that kind of stuff as needed. And uh, so that's the plan. Um, there's also a, a number of other little airports over here that are actually quite nice. Um, and I've been talking to some people uh, that are based out of here and they have also offered to um, host us and, and all that kind of stuff. And we're sorting that out, right? Like this is still in flux. Louisiana is, we know it's a sure thing. We know there's 24 seven fuel. We know that there's a hangar available for us if we need it. Um, but if it turns out that one of these other uh, airports um, has uh, someone who'd really like us to hang out there, you know, why not, right? Like, give it a try. Um, it's interesting, if you look at the, some of these names, these are all private airports, right, PVTs. Um, like this one is Centro Brasileiro de Aviação, uh, Brazilian Center of Aviation. This is probably a flying club, right? Piquet Private. Piquet, I believe, was a... Um, Formula One driver, so probably like these are probably all like someone owns these. There's a flying club, right? So it's it's a really cool sort of flying club community in Brazil. 
you'll notice that there's some airspace here. So SBDs are danger areas. Um, they're, they're similar to, uh, not necessarily MOAs um, in the US, but uh, warning areas, I don't know what the equivalent would be in the US. And interestingly, um, this one is for the, it's the uh, training airspace for the flying club over here. Um, and some of these others are for like similar things. Uh, you can't, what you can't see on this chart is that these are actually fairly high up. This one is like ground to 6,000 feet and this is like 4,000 feet up and this one is 6,000 feet up or something like that. So they, they're all, um, we're, we're gonna be under, except for this one that we're flying through, um, we're gonna be under the other ones. So no concerns there. Um, okay, so Luciania, I believe we're overnighting Luciania. Honestly, I don't remember. Um, let's have a look. Yes, yes we are. So we overnight in Louisiana. Then the next day, we're gonna go shoot down to, this is our last day of flying, um, Juiz de Fora. Um, it's another flying club. There's, see the SBDs? This is for their airspace, for the airport. Um, Juiz de Fora. Uh, another little flying club, little flying school kind of situation. But we wanted a place that we could stop that was close to Rio. Um, you'll see this is 71 nautical miles um, away from, from Rio. And the reason is, look at this airspace, it's insane, right? Like, this is going to be quite stressful to deal with. Um, so we're making sure that we're fresh, right? Like we're gonna get to Rishifada. Um, we want everything, you know, like weather has to be perfect, weather has to be good, we can't be exhausted, right? Like if we need an overnight in Rishifada, we're happy to do it. And then 70 miles, which is a half hour or so in, in the airplane. And we're going to Clubicel, which is a private flying club airport um, outside of Rio. This is actually about an hour and a half car ride from Rio, um, but it's outside the insanity of this airspace. Um, so our, our plan is uh, we're gonna land here. Um, it's about oh, 2,200 feet roughly 2300 feet we're gonna land here relax um and maybe drive into rio uh one thing that you i mentioned earlier is i'm from brazil so my family lives in rio de janeiro so um they're gonna meet us there and they're gonna drive us into town um and uh you know like spend a day and then i'm gonna come back and do any maintenance items that are outstanding i know i have to do an oil change because it's been you know 40 40 to 50 hours so i'll do an oil change here and um then the plan is to uh when we're very fresh we're gonna fly in to the rio airport um this is the airport that i mentioned earlier uh, that i want to fly in and out of it is a big commercial airport um there's one or two small airplanes there but it's basically like airliners in and out of here um it's downtown rio de janeiro and it's absolutely gorgeous. So I plan to, we plan to fly down the coast and up into here. There's all sorts of like visual routes in here that aren't shown on this chart. Um, but uh, yeah, and then fly into here on the, the last day and then depart from here heading north. The plan for north is, depends on how much time it took to get here, how much time we have left of vacation. We either head straight back, similar to before, taking our time this time, or we're gonna go up the coast. Oops, zoom out. Let's see if zoom out works, there we go. Or we're just gonna go up the coast and do like a picturesque, take our time, you know, coming all the way up and then across and into Boa Vista again. I wanna, I wanna leave from Boa Vista because this part I want to have done it before and know how it how it works and then sort of take our time in the caribbean and back home so that's the route should be a lot of fun we hope that you join us on our trip uh check out our videos on build fly go and post comments and we hope you'll come along with us